Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about one of the eye conditions I have, which is aniridia. The important thing to make clear from the start is that although it can make things a little bit difficult sometimes, the fact is that I've had it all my life, so I'm used to it, I know how to deal with it, and I'm comfortable living with it, so I'm happy. Aniridia basically means I don't have a fully formed iris in my eye. The iris is the coloured ring around the pupil, which is what people refer to when they say they have, say, green eyes or blue eyes or whatever. So I don't have an eye colour particularly, unless you want to call it black. But the iris does have a purpose, it's not just there to look nice. It's basically a muscle that controls the size of the pupil to determine how much light enters your eye. So if it's very bright, the iris will shrink the pupil to let less light into your eye so it doesn't blind you. And when it gets dark, then the iris will expand the pupil to let as much light in as possible to try and help you see things better. So because I haven't got a proper iris, I can't control how much light enters my eye. They do adjust to an extent, I think there is some remnants of the iris muscle there, but certainly nowhere near as quickly or effectively as it would for a normal sighted person. So if I'm going into a relatively bright or dark space, it can be quite difficult sometimes. Going outdoors into bright sunlight can be particularly frustrating or difficult sometimes, not just because the sun itself is bright, but also all the surfaces that it bounces off. There can be windows, any walls that have light colours, and cars that have light colours. They can all cause glare to reflect and hit me from all angles, which I struggle to deal with sometimes. And if it's recently been raining and then the sun comes out, then that can get even worse because the sun then gets reflected off all the layers of water back into my eyes as well. So the glare is coming at me from even more angles then. And if my eyes are tired, that makes it quite difficult as well. And if I've got a cold, or even if I've just sneezed shortly beforehand, then my eyes also get quite sensitive because there is a connection between the sinuses and the eyes. So in the worst cases, when the glare gets really bad, my eyes will start watering and blurring my vision and I'll struggle to even keep them open because it's just too blinding. So to get around all that, I have a pair of anti-glare sunglasses that do help a great deal, especially because the glass extends above, below and around the eyes to reduce the glare that comes in from all sides, which normal sunglasses don't do, they just stop light coming in directly in front of you. So these glasses are particularly useful for me. Some days are better than others of course, a lot of the time I get around reasonably well, but if it's a really, really bright day or if my eyes aren't in a very good mood, then there's only so much the glasses can do. But even then, they do still take the worst of the glare off, so they do still help. And it's not just in bright sunlight I might have to wear those glasses. Even if it's a cloudy day, I may still need to wear them, if my eyes are particularly sensitive, or if there's a bit of glare reflecting off the clouds, or if the sun's out and I'm in a shadowy area, the sunlight may still be reflecting off buildings near me. So it's not unusual for me to wear sunglasses, even when I'm not in the sunlight, if I do feel the need to occasionally. Inside buildings, I'm generally fine. The lighting usually isn't too glary then. But outside, glare is more likely to be a problem. Grey and dull days are certainly easier for me, but I still prefer going out in the sunshine because everything looks and feels a lot nicer then, and I have the glasses to help me feel comfortable. So I always make sure I have my glasses handy just in case I need them. If I'm only walking a really, really short distance, then I might not bother with them when I'll put up the brightness for a very brief moment or two, but I can't really deal with it for very long. The effect of glare also extends to computer screens where you have light background on a lot of programs. You know, word processors have white pages that you type on. Explorer or Finder windows where you look at your files have white backgrounds. iTunes has light background colours. Websites and emails normally use white backgrounds. All sorts of programs have bright coloured backgrounds with dark text on top. So it's quite glary and tiring on my eyes to look at that, to try and focus on the text and the buttons and things like that. I can do it for a short period of time, but it does soon become a strain on the eyes, so I can't do it for very long. In the old days, when you had those big, bulky CRT monitors, then those glass screens were particularly reflective and glary. Modern flat screens are better, certainly, but it's still difficult to focus on them when they have light backgrounds, because I still have to work hard to focus on the text that's on the screen. And it's not just a case of turning the brightness or the contrast down, because that just makes things harder to read in general anyway. I do need things to be sharp and clear with good contrast to the background so it stands out. The way I work around all that is to use accessibility software. At work I have a Windows PC and I have a program called Supernova from a company called Dolphin on there, which allows me to alter the display in all sorts of ways to make it easier to work with. It also has speech output to help blind people navigate the screen if they need it, but I don't use that particular feature. The software was purchased for me under the Access to Work scheme here in the UK, which helps to fund accessibility products and services that disabled people need to do their jobs. 
And there are other software programs available that do similar things to help visually impaired people, I must say, but Supernova is the one that I've chosen to use. Windows does have its own accessibility features built in, but as with many visually impaired Windows users I know, I've always found the built-in features too basic and they don't work quite as well or do exactly what I want them to. So many people end up buying separate software instead. I don't know if the latest versions of Windows, like Windows 10, are any better in that regard. Maybe it's got better over the years, but the features on Windows XP and Windows 7 weren't of much use to me. At home, on the other hand, I use a Mac, and that comes with accessibility features already built in, so it's really easy. Apple have added all sorts of special accessibility features to all their products, and it's wonderful. So at work and at home, I'm able to use these accessibility features to turn the screen from a standard view to a negative view, so that I have a black background with white text on it. And that makes a huge difference to me, because it makes it so much easier. The contrast is so much better, there's no glare, and it's nowhere near as tiring on the eyes. It looks a bit odd to other people of course, especially as it turns everything negative, not just the black and white colours, but everything, so it does look a bit weird sometimes. But I am able to change the colours back to normal if I need to see a picture or a video properly, or if I need to see the actual colours of a document I'm working on, then I can quickly tap a keyboard shortcut and look at the colours as they're supposed to be, and then I can flip it back again for reading and typing stuff. So I often flip between the two when I'm working. On the Mac, for instance, the option to invert colours is under System Preferences, Accessibility, Display, but it's a lot quicker to use the keyboard shortcut. To do that, you have to hold down Control, Alt and Command, which are the three keys to the left of the spacebar on my keyboard, and tap the number 8. That will flip the display from positive to negative and vice versa. If you try that keyboard shortcut on a Mac and it doesn't work, then you may need to activate it first by going to System Preferences, Keyboard, Shortcuts. But it's not just brightness and glare that's an issue. Darkness can be a problem as well. If I'm walking outside in the dark, for instance, it can be quite difficult and even dangerous, especially if the streets aren't very well lit. I do have to be very careful, more so than normal sighted people. So I don't like to go down dark streets on my own if I can avoid it. Not just for safety from anyone who might be lurking there, but also because it's just far easier for me to walk into things and trip over. So I do try and stick to well lit areas when I can. Even if that means I have to walk a little bit further and not take the most direct route, I'd much rather go the safer way. And even in the daytime, darkness can be a problem. For instance, if I'm outside in the sunshine and I go indoors into a pub or a restaurant that's got a relatively dark interior, I might not be able to see anything at all to start with. It will take my eyes a bit longer to adjust than it would for other people. So if I'm going into a pub with a friend, for instance, I may just hold on to their shoulder until my eyes have adjusted so they can make sure I don't lose them or trip over anything. My eyes do adjust gradually, so I'm usually okay after a couple of minutes, but it's a lot slower and they won't adjust to the same extent that they do for everyone else. So if the lighting isn't that great, it will continue to be difficult, even after my eyes have adjusted. I know that may all sound like having an iridia is really frustrating and difficult, and yes, there are moments when it can be. It can be awkward, and if my eyes are tired or are just not behaving themselves properly, which happens occasionally, then yes, it is difficult. But the majority of the time it's fine, it doesn't bother me. I've learned to live with it and I've adjusted to it because I was born with it. As far as I'm concerned, and as far as my brain's concerned, this is normal, because I've never known any different. I don't know what normal sight really is, and I don't feel I've lost it because I never had it in the first place. So I don't regard it as a problem, it's a bit of a nuisance sometimes, but it's not a showstopper. It's not something that stops me living my life and doing the things I want to do. I have friends, I have a good job, I can get out and about by myself, and so on. It's just something I cope with and deal with, because I have to. It's as simple as that, really, I just don't let it get in the way. So I hope you found that interesting. There are obviously organisations and support groups out there who can talk about it with a lot more authority and knowledge and professionalism than I can. In the UK, you have Aniridia Network UK, who are at Aniridia org.uk or there's also Aniridia Foundation International who are at www.make-a-miracle.org so they can give you a lot more information if you're interested but for now I hope this video gave you an interesting insight into how things work for me so thank you for watching and listening bye